Welcome to KJV Home Bible Study from the Man Cave. This is JC Legar with Chloe Legar, and we're going to continue with the Gospel of Matthew. And if you're noticing there's no background music, it's because YouTube says that's copyrighted, and so I have to do it without music now. Wah. Anyway, this will be part 144. But, Chloe Legar, before I do anything, what do I need to do? Pray. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father God, Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you for this opportunity to teach your word. I pray, Lord, that it will draw us to you. And Lord, that's the purpose of every Bible study, to walk in fellowship with you. And Lord, that you would reveal yourself to us. Bless this time, Father, in your word. It's in Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. So we are in Matthew 21, 18 through 22. Now in the morning, as he returned into the city, he hungered. And when he saw a fig tree in the way, he came to it and found nothing thereon, but leaves only. And said unto it, Let no fruit grow on thee henceforth for ever. And presently the fig tree withered away. And when the disciples saw it, they marveled, saying, How soon is the fig tree withered away? Jesus answered and said unto them, Verily I say unto you, If ye have faith, and doubt not, Ye shall not only do this which is done to the fig tree, but also if ye shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, it shall be done. And all things whatsoever ye shall ask in prayer, believing ye shall receive. So we're going to look at some scripture where Jesus is wanting you to believe and you can either approach Jesus in faith because you're trusting in who he is as our God. See that's the thing if I say to my wife I'm gonna be faithful to you and she says okay good but let me check your phone every day to make sure you're not speaking to any women and no women are speaking to you. Or if I check her phone every day and I say, I want to make sure no guys are speaking to you. We're saying, yeah, I believe, but I don't trust. And if we're saying to God, Lord, I believe, but I'm not sure if you're going to honor your word. There is a problem with our faith. We got an evil heart of unbelief. If I say, Chloe, I'm going to cook you lunch right now. And you're like, okay, but are you really? Are you really going to feed me, Dad? I'm not sure. I'm not trusting your word. That's going to hurt my feelings. And in the same way, when we're saying, Lord, I trust you, but there are times I doubt I doubt your word in places. I don't believe you're speaking the truth in every word in the Bible. Are we calling God a liar? So let's have a look and see a few instances where we are doubting. Okay, so we are here in Matthew 14.23. And when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up into a mountain apart to pray. And when the evening was come, he was there alone. But the ship was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with waves, for the wind was contrary. And in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them, walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a spirit! And they cried out for fear. But straightway Jesus spake unto them, saying, 
Be of good cheer, it is I, be not afraid. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou, let me come unto thee on the water. And he said, Come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid. And beginning to sink, he cried, saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said unto him, O thou of little faith, wherefore didst thou doubt? And when they were come into the ship, the wind ceased. Then they that were in the ship came and worshipped him, saying, Of a truth, thou art the Son of God. So Peter did have water-walking faith. As long as he was keeping his eyes on Jesus, everything was fine. And he was walking on the sea, but as soon as he started looking around at the wind and the waves, and his focus was on himself for a second, thinking, I'm a man, I'm not able to walk on water, what am I thinking? He started sinking. Again, we're supposed to keep our eyes on Jesus and his word. What did Jesus say? Come. And he should have said, that's good enough for me. One single word from Jesus is going to give me the faith because of his character. I trust in the word of my God. If he tells me to come, I don't care if it's water or fire. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were having a good old time in that furnace with Jesus, the Son of God. They didn't have a problem. But again, let's keep our eyes on Jesus and our faith in his character. He is trustworthy. Let's look at another verse here. And let's see. In verse 17, and one, oh, I'm sorry, Mark 9, 17. And one of the multitude answered and said, Master, I have brought unto thee my son, which hath a dumb spirit. And wheresoever he taketh him, he teareth him. And he foameth and gnashes with his teeth and pineth away. And I spake to thy disciples, and they should cast him out, and they could not. He answered him, and saith, O faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him unto me. And they brought him unto him, and when he saw him, straightway the spirit tear him. And he fell on the ground and wallowed foaming. And he asked his father, How long is it ago since this came unto him? And he said, Of a child. And oft times it has cast him into the fire and into the waters to destroy him. But if thou canst do anything, have compassion on us and help us. Jesus said unto him, If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. And straightway the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe, help thou mine unbelief. When Jesus saw that the people came running together, he rebuked the foul spirit, saying unto him, Thou dumb and deaf spirit, I charge thee, come out of him, and enter no more into him. And the spirit cried, and rent him sore, and came out of him. And he was as one dead, insomuch that many said, He is dead. But Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him up, and he arose.
so real quick, I love the heart of this father. He was at the end of his rope. He tried the disciples. Unfortunately, the disciples were lacking faith themselves. And plus, this was a very strong demon inside the child. Jesus later on says this kind can only come out through prayer and fasting. But again, he said, Lord, I believe, but help my unbelief. There are times, Lord, when I doubt. And again, what is doubt but to call God's character into question? You're saying, yeah, your word says this, but I'm not sure. It was written by man, and I don't trust things, and I got doubts, and I'm not sure, and blah, 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 blah. And again, it's an evil heart of unbelief. We're doubting God's character. When God promised in his word that every word of God is pure. And we're saying, yeah, I doubt that. So let's look in Hebrews what God thinks of an evil heart of unbelief. Okay. Okay, let's look in Hebrews 3, 7. Wherefore, as the Holy Ghost saith, Today, if ye will hear his voice, harden not your heart, as in the provocation, in the day of temptation in the wilderness, when your fathers tempted me, proved me, and saw my works forty years. Wherefore, I was grieved with that generation, and said, They do always err in their heart, and they have not known my ways. So I swore in my wrath, they shall not enter into my rest. Take heed, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief, in departing from the living God. But exhort one another daily, while it is called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. For we are made partakers of Christ, if we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast unto the end. While it is said, Today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts, as in the provocation. For some, when they had heard, did provoke. Howbeit, not all that came out of Egypt by Moses. But with whom was he grieved forty years? Was it not with them that has sinned, whose carcasses fell in the wilderness? And to whom swear he that they should not enter into his rest, but to them that believed not? So we see that they could not enter in because of unbelief. So, John 3.16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth on him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Do you believe that? If you do, you're trusting in the finished work of Jesus Christ. It's a matter of you placing your faith on what he's done for you, not a matter of you trying to be good and to earn your way to heaven by your works. You're saying, Lord, I am resting in you, in what you promised, that if I believe on you, you will save me. So again, it's, it comes down to that. Either you believe God and his promise, or you reject God and his promise. And if you do, unfortunately, it won't end pretty for you on Judgment Day. But if you have turned to God in that prayer of the Father, Lord, I believe, but help my unbelief. Again, you just say to God, You know what, Lord? You have always been faithful to me. You have never let me down. There is not a time 
when I can say, you know, God said he would do this for me and he lied. God is not a man that he should lie. If he promised he's going to do something in his word in your life, it's as good as gold. So again, trust in the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved. This is J.C. Ligar with Chloe Ligar. I hope you liked the study. And if you did, join me next time as we continue to study the Gospel of Matthew. God bless. Have a good day. Bye-bye.